Hunger Games spin-off prequel. It was only a matter of time. Then again, I'm surprised it took them this long to get around to making a prequel or a spin-off. And I've just reminded myself that 2050 was eight years ago and now I feel sick. Anyway, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is the backstory to President Snow, the villain of the Hunger Games franchise, which definitely had my curiosity. And when the film ended and cut to credits, I said to myself in my head, that's it? That's the grand backstory to the villain? Quite simply, that's the main problem of this film for me, is that the story that they tell is not nearly as grand or as monumental as you'd think it would be, considering it's the backstory to the main villain of the franchise and the most tyrannical president that Panama's has ever seen. I don't mean grand in terms of scale. Like, I'm not annoyed that it was no big action-adventure spectacle or anything. It's just the events that happen in Snow's life at this point in time just didn't feel like they were worth exploring in a film. Pretty much everything that happens to Snow in this film comes across pretty much just as details that you'd read on a Wikipedia page, like a Hunger Games Wikipedia page on President Coriolana Snow. You heard what Phoenix said in Mockingjay Part 1 about how Snow has poisoned everybody he's ever known to get to the top, to be the president. And you only really see Snow take those steps to being that evil, dastardly President Snow in like the last five minutes of this film. And then again, he's still not nearly the same character that he is when we first meet him in the first Hunger Games film. And this film, taking place 64 years before that first film, you feel like there's way more story left to tell with this character. I don't know if that's Lionsgate fishing for sequels, if they're trying to tempt Suzanne Collins to write more books about Snow. Wouldn't be surprised though, because... You know, when I was watching these trailers, I was like, oh, please don't tell me that President Snow became President Snow because of a woman, because of a broken heart or some bullshit. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that's how it goes down. The romance between Snow and Lucy Gray, Rachel Zegler's character, completely fell flat for me, did not work, did not feel any chemistry between them. Surprise, surprise, another Hunger Games romance that just does not work. So that line that Snow says in Mockingjay Part 1 that they've used in every single piece of marketing for this film is the things we love the most that destroy us. It just doesn't feel like it has any weight considering how just mediocre the romances in this film. Thinking back to the film last night, I almost forgot that there was an actual Hunger Games in the story. And I think that's because the Hunger Games in this film are boring. It takes place in this building in the middle of the capital. And I can understand that it's 60 years in the past, they don't have all the sci-fi technology and all that snazzy stuff. But seriously, a building, a big auditorium type place, this just boring ass brown building, this is the Hunger Games fight to the death. They could have had some interesting close quarter encounters, but no. That bleak, gritty tone of the original Hunger Games films, the ones that made Panem feel kind of enthralling and dark, pretty much non-existent in this one. So the world of Panem just comes across as a playground for a film franchise. And that's ultimately what this film is. It's another film franchise being milked by a studio. I walked out of The Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes not knowing that much more about President Snow that I didn't already know before, apart from the one or two details that the film thinks are monumental and just so integral to this man's life that it just really isn't. If I could sum up this film in one word, it would be pointless.